Hey, it's Nate Savage here, and I asked a lot of guitar players what are the things that every guitar player is afraid of, and had a lot of really good responses. And uh, other than uh, spiders, snakes, clowns, or being eaten by a giant megalodon, here is my top 20 things that all guitarists are afraid of. Number one is not knowing what to play when somebody says, hey, you play guitar, play me a song. Nate, can you play Freebird for me? Ross, what are you doing, man? How did you even get in here? Get out. Um, anyway, the way to get past this fear is to have three songs or so that you know really well. And uh, by doing that, you're gonna have, always have something to play in. You're gonna you be building your- you could just play uh, Sweet Child of Mine for me, just for like a minute, I would, I'd love it. Or you could ignore them. Anyway, getting those three songs under your belt is gonna help build your skills to, to where you're gonna get better on guitar faster. My fa favorite song is Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. Can you play that? That was okay, I guess. <sighs> and having a few songs ready will get you through a lot of different social situations. Oh God, my eyes freak, not again. Oh. But seriously, number two is some kind of bodily harm or injury due to breaking a string from tuning. Number three. Breaking out of the pentatonic box. And a couple of really good tips for dealing with this problem is to number one, Try to pick out melodies and scales on single strings that forces you to get out of that box. And number two, start trying to incorporate some arpeggios into your playing as well. It may be really tough at first, but the more you dig into it, the easier it'll get and you'll be like, I can do this, this is good. Number four, your guitar strap coming loose and breaking the headstock off. If you've been around the internet at all, I'm sure you've seen the compilation of videos of guitar players doing stupid things with their guitar that put the life of that guitar in jeopardy. And the one really simple solution for this is to just get some really good high quality strap locks or even duct tape if you're like super Mr. Flip with your guitar. Break! Number five, do I even need to tell you? No. Number six, and this one is quite embarrassing when it happens in front of people and that's not bending a note up to pitch. Now two things that can really help you um, not have this problem or be afraid of this is to just practice bending on a regular basis. Bending up to a specific pitch or having a solo that is a go-to solo that has a lot of bending in it just to keep your ear and your hands in shape for bending. Number seven is blowing a tube in your tube amp. And there's a really simple solution for this one. Let me show you. This is my Mesa Boogie F30. And you can see that I have tubes here, but I also just keep a spare set of tubes right here. It may be a little bit more expensive initially, but it's worth having them right there if you ever need them. Number eight, becoming a bass player. And there's nothing wrong with playing bass. It's a great instrument, but if you do this, for God's sake, don't play bass like a guitar player. Actually listen to a few really good bass players and play bass like a bassist. Number nine, getting stuck in a rut with your playing. And this is kind of a serious one because it affects all of us and um, we all wanna get better at guitar. But the biggest tips I have for you for not getting stuck in a rut is to always have a musical goal or a musical end that you're learning things for, like have a gig lined up, whether it's uh, at a coffee house, at an open mic, at your church, or, or a recording, you know, just recording at home. Always have a musical end or a goal for your playing and always put a deadline with it that'll really keep pushing you to get better in that specific area that you know, that whatever song you're preparing for pertains to. Number 10, someone knocking your guitar over and breaking the headstock off. I've actually done that to a guitar and I've seen it done lots of times and the answer is right there. Oh, you, wait, you can't see it. Come here, I'll show you. So those are just some fairly inexpensive wall hangers that we use and they're pretty cool looking and they keep your guitar safe away from the pets and the rugrats and all those things that could potentially damage them. Number 11, adjusting the truss rod on your guitar. And there's really nothing to be afraid of here as long as you remember to go in very small increments. So maybe like a 16th or an eighth of a turn just to start with to see how your particular truss rod reacts on your guitar. And if you have an old guitar, you might want to lubricate the nut just to make sure it's not seized up or anything. Number 12, anuxophobia. I don't know if I said that right, but it's the fear of fingernails. And most guitar players are either feared feared, scared of breaking a fingernail if they're, you know, classical players or fingerstyle players, or they're afraid of growing their nails long. Either way, they're afraid of fingernails one way or the other. But 
if you are a classical player who uses uh, their fingernails to play, you could always have some like press on nails or glued on nails as a backup. Or if you are a player who hates fingernails, just always carry some fingernail clippers with you. I always keep a pair in my backpack. Number 13, the keys of F sharp and E flat major. And um, there's a funny story that goes along with this. I heard when Frank Gabali was uh, coming up and learning the guitar, he couldn't play in the key of E flat. And he's one of the biggest virtuosos on the planet. And if he couldn't play in E flat, then uh, it just goes to show you that you have to take time to put in to play in certain keys on the guitar really well. And that's what he did after about a month of uh, really witch hitting E flat. He could play in E flat just as he could E. Number 14, not knowing what to practice. And I think this fear comes from the fact that we all want to get better on guitar. And when we don't see progress, it gets us, it makes us afraid that we're never going to get to where we want to be. And one of the biggest keys to getting better and seeing progress and knowing what to practice is to really, really define specifically as explicitly as you can what it is that you want to accomplish on the guitar and then set that as a goal. Number 15 is any kind of hand injuries, trauma, arthritis, all those types of things. And the, really the only answer to this is to walk around with baseball mitts on the entire time for the rest of your life. Number 16, and this is a big one, especially for newer guitar players, and that is bar chords or specifically the F major chord. But there are things you can do to make this easier on yourself. Number one, get your guitar set up to where it plays as easy as possible. Number two, get the bar sounding good before you even try to put the rest of the shape on. If you can't do that, then putting the whole shape on is gonna be really tough. And if you've been playing guitar for a while, just be sure to incorporate bar chords in your playing quite often. That way, if you're playing them more and more, your hand's gonna stay in better shape to play those bar chords. Number 17, music theory. It's Man, that's just like anything else that's really scary. It's very scary when you first start looking at it, but once you dig into it, it's not as scary. It's kind of like Gandalf, right? You shall not pass! Right, once you do that and stand up to it, you're gonna realize it's not as scary as you think it is, and it's gonna make you all the better of a musician once you start digging into it. Number 18, and I am very guilty of this one, and that's singing and playing at the same time. And the short story on this one is you just have to be prepared and be willing to look like an idiot for a little while. But seriously, the biggest thing here is just taking that initial step and putting yourself out there. You may feel silly, but if it's getting you one step closer to your goals on the guitar, then it's worth it. Number 19 is playing in front of people. And the best I, advice I have for this is to over prepare. You are going to be nervous, just accept that fact. But if you're really prepared, that can really help negate a lot of the nerves that you're gonna experience. Also set a date uh, for like an open mic or whatever it is, that way you are forced to prepare and you have uh, like a goal or timeline. So if you're playing at an open mic. You suck! And there are always gonna be hecklers like that in life, but just ignore them. They're not doing anything with their life anyway, and you are doing things to take steps toward your goals on the guitar. Number 20, and this was number one by far, is sheet music. And there's a really good reason for this. Reading traditional sheet music is abnormally difficult on the guitar, but the good news is, depending on your own specific goals on the guitar, is you don't have to learn how to read traditional sheet music to be a great guitar player, but I would recommend at least learning how to read rhythms really well. That can come in handy in a lot of different situations. So those are the top 20 scariest things that all guitar players are afraid of. Let me know in the comments below what are the things that you're most afraid of and your tips for overcoming them. See you later.